Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget. Hello. Hello, number 128. Nine. It's only nine. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Whenever I say eight, I mean nine. 120... Nine. Nine of Sounding the Shadows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we don't need to hunt around for what's going on this week, do we? No, we do not. <laughs> I mean, no. because it's all over the world. Yep, the World Cup, the Football World Cup mm. is on. There seems to have been a World Cup final almost every day recently, but <laughs> this is a real one. Well, those were real, but this one, this is the one that so many people are mm. interested mm. in. And I mean, there's no doubt about it. This one, and we're not going to go into all the problems. Everybody knows them, the problems with Qatar. Have I said that right? I don't know. Anyway. It's sort of more like something wrong with your throat, isn't it? <laughs> Qatar. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, I, you've gone off somewhere wrong. else. Now we're someone going to be will get really cross with me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. but I, I don't know what your reaction has been to it so far. And we've only seen a bit of it, haven't we? But do you know the thing that struck me? It's the biggest competition in the world and every country is against another country. But what seemed to me the, the thing that's picked up if you're watching it on TV, and I'm sure if you're there, is what unites people as mm. much as the difference between them and the competition. What, what, were you the, th what sort of things were you thinking of? Well, I suppose... I suppose it is a universal language. I mean, obviously, it isn't. Um, everybody's talking in their own language. But the universal language of disappointment, devastation on people's faces, mm. incredible unity. Uh, I mean, I was just thinking of Wales, Adrian. What mm. a glorious thing to see. And Japan. Yeah, you know, yeah. Extraordinary That was amazing. Excitement. Japan beating Germany 2-1. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and joy. And yeah. So yeah. these feelings, you don't need to see the language. You don't need to know the language. You don't need to understand mm. that much except to know what it is to give your all and fail, to know what it is to be the underdog. It is quite interesting because even those who say, I mean, you know, people always say, oh, football is just kicking a piece of rubber and a ball around a field or if it's cricket... That's just people standing around, somnambulists tottering around a large yes. field. Yes, or but if actually, it's rugby, a load of people mashing about in the playground. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's <laughs> actually a that those things that unite people are nothing to do with the specifics of the sport, are they? No. They're to do with loving, supporting people and mm. seeing people delighted when they do well, when mm. they thought they weren't going to do well, mm. and all of those, are, and the disappointment. Mm. Uh, that obviously happens as well. Mm. It, mm. I I can't. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, <laughs> seeing more of this competition, especially as the some of the less um, known teams look as though they could do quite well. Yeah. That's good. And then there's the little moments. I mean, I think uh, I'm thinking of Jack Greenwich and what happened with him because it's mm. such a lovely story, isn't it? Well, for those who don't know, a lad, I don't know if he's 10 or 11, something like something that. Something like that. Who suffers from cerebral palsy, as Jack Grealish's sister, sister does, does yeah. wrote to Jack Grealish, who contacted him. And went to see him. And went to see him, and he promised that if he scored a goal, he would do a worm, which is a sort of wriggling movement with your arms. Yes. And he, he didn't look 100% happy about, no. about that. And the but other thing, when he promised happened, it, I mean, Adrian, was he said, well, I've only actually scored one that's goal right. this season, but if I do it... was very modest. He said, I've only actually scored one goal, yeah. but uh, if. if I score, I'll do it. And, of course, in the game, the which they played, um, he scored. And... Um, <laughs> he then turned to the camera and did the worm. Yes. And uh, I thought it was marvellous. Well, what really I love good. is that that bit of film will go all over the world with nobody yeah. having any idea why this man That's is right, doing yeah. this ridiculous <clears throat> gesture, but he's doing it yeah. for a little boy. That's right, yeah. And and it's moments like that that are mm. so important, are. really. And let's face it, cricket, uh, cricketers, footballers do ludicrous things after scoring anyway. Well, they do. I mean, they do backward flips, they roll on the grass they kiss every member of the team i mean so mm. it's not that amazing but isn't it isn't it lovely that, that well that those happens? things are and then you get moments don't you like the mute stand of the iranian football team who did not sing the iranian mm. national anthem i mean that's a stand a mute stand against something that is is quite awful it was mainly the ill treatment of 
of well, women who, in general and one woman in particular. Well, one young yeah. woman in general. Yeah, who disappeared yeah. more or less. And yeah. even whether you wear an armband or you don't, there's that, that sense of people trying to make some tiny statement yeah. against mm. the powerfulness mm. of nations that make decisions that are so and of course that, harsh and condemning that possibility happens because it's all public mm. and normally the whole world isn't it's it's more public than it ever was before but it's not mm. public in that way that you've got millions of people mm. tuned in to see what you do mm. to see whether you wear the uh, the, I mean, the other thing was about the rainbow armband. Yes, and exactly. That sort of thing. See yeah. what happens. So, yeah, yeah, fascinating. So, is it that it only is has a value if it's public and on TV and all over the world? Because if you remember, last time we saw the World Cup was in two thousand and eighteen, and we were in Hungary. That's right. And we yeah. were, uh, I say, working with. I think we were amazed by a group of young people who are working their socks off, really, aren't they, to try to bring Jesus alive in a country where, well, how would you put it, religion and state have somehow, would you say they've become confused or they've well, certainly... Well, we, had, we had, a dinner, had dinner with the family and the fellow who was the father and uh, husband in the family said that one of the problems that many people in that country have is that they they have a, a whole stash of untruth in their life yeah. that they have to emerge from a, mm. in order to understand what's actually happened. Because during the war, there was a period when the Nazis were there, mm -hmm. and then the communists came. Uh -huh. Promising and, so much. Yeah, and people really, really thought, oh, this is it. We're mm. going to be okay now. Mm. And then suddenly you look round and you think, they didn't tell the truth. I mean, I'm saying what they said to me. I wasn't mm. there. Mm. But... We spoke to a number of people who said, um, "This this country and country like countries like it are escaping from lies." Well, they are, and they were encouraged to tell. I mean, this this guy was talking about when he was a child and celebrating the Russian triumphs, and mm. then hearing more and more and more about how people have been encouraged to. Uh, to pass on information, mm. their parents, their brothers and sisters, their friends, yeah. um, and then they have to live with that for the rest of their lives. And in the middle of it, there was this beautiful group of young people. School uh, children, weren't they? Age, school age. Well, the first time we went, they yeah. were school age. When we were in, in 2018, we were working with a group of young people who were working with the children, weren't we? That's right. On yeah. a camp. I mean, I remember it because we desperately wanted to see how England were getting on. And the only way we could see it was with a German commentary. Do you remember? So I, I remember Pickford. Well, no, we were, to go back to the beginning, we were worried we wouldn't be able to follow it. Yes. Uh, but and when the commentary started well. in, uh, in German, was it in German? It was in German for some um, reason. We, we knew enough names and we knew enough words that kind of travel across the languages. Rashford. Yeah, Rash, Ford. Rashford. Peakford. <laughs> so as soon as we said Peakford, we looked for the goalkeeper. And Rashford, we managed that. <laughs> and uh, Kane and, and yes, the others. There were, there were other things. So that was exciting. Was, and and yeah, our friends yeah, joined yeah. in supporting us, mm. watching us, laughing at us, I think. But going back for a moment to the young people who we spoke to before, Mm. One of the, I, I think it's one of the, the I, I don't know how to describe it, but one of the most moving moments, I think, in the work we've done, such as it is, when someone brought a young girl to us who was... Well, teenagers, they Well, young teen, she was a young teenager, though, um, and said she, in English she wants to tell you something, but she perhaps doesn't have the English to say it, so I'm going to translate. And the, the girl said what it was in Hungarian. And then her friend said, she wants to tell you, she wants to say thank you for telling the truth mm. about Christianity. Mm. And it really brought tears to my eyes because if ever there was anything we've always wanted to do, yeah. it's to be able to tell the truth mm. about Christianity as far as we are able anyway. And, and let's be honest that's why this group had asked us to go there because they are trying to do that aren't they? Oh. 
and and sometimes I know that they're feeling that they're failing that it's so hard to make a difference but I was thinking Adrian um, I don't know if you remember but um, it was the first time or the second I'm not sure but we were touring in Australia and we had representatives of World Vision with us and every evening they were telling the story that I know lots of people have heard of the little boy well, just running tell, up. Just tell oh, the story. Because, well, yes, uh, I mean, there's a... It's good to tell the story. Go on. The, well, yeah, I mean, there was this little boy and he was on the beach and the beach had thrown up millions, hundreds of starfish onto the beach and they were going to dry out and die. And this little boy was running frantically around, picking up starfish and throwing them into the sea. And somebody said to him, well, you can't save all the starfish. And he said, no, but I can save this one. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember, but that message won us over. And by the end of that week, we started working, you know, alongside World Vision and trying to do stuff to, to um, I don't know, to sort of represent them, be ambassadors for mm. them, travel and see what they were doing. And it's such a small message, but we heard it. It took a while, didn't it, for it mm. to really win us over, change our mm. uh, our feelings about it. We had the, this particular tension we've known since we worked with children when people would say to me or you, I was working in the secure unit when someone said it to me, um, what, what's the point in working for these children when we should be working to change uh, schools, teaching governments, uh, mm. living standards. Mm. And it's the same thing. I mean, my reply was, I agree absolutely with what you're saying. Mm. And I hope everybody, uh, including me, will do whatever they can to make that, that a huge change. But right now, I've got five teenagers That's here right. who are desperately in need of, of help. And I'm not going to tell them that they'll have to wait until we've changed the world. No. Um, so... That, that tension it's, will never go away, tension. I don't think. I mean, we often felt when we were visiting projects with World Vision that we were not doing the work. I mean, this is the other side of what you were just saying about working in the secure unit. We were not doing the amazing things we saw mm. people doing. We were just going to come back and talk about it or write about it or whatever. So I think whatever, whatever you can do, yeah. whichever side you are, um, there are things, stands you can take against... Yeah, I don't injustice think injustice and poverty. I, and I don't even think they're sides. I think they're all part of exactly. the exactly. And when you think of Jesus, I mean, when once he was on the cross, nailed up there, um, I have no. Well, people did say, look at look at this one. You know, it's recorded, isn't it? Look at him. He he saved others, but he's, he's done nothing yeah. for himself. Yeah. Um, all those he'd met and healed or. <laughs> spoken to would yes. say no he did a great job with me that's right and yes. jesus knew that there was there was no point in staying to simply do that that he'd he'd saved a lot of starfish but what he wanted to do was to change the world mm. and that's in the end was what he did yeah i was uh, thinking adrian this is again this is going you're talking about that this is going a bit from the sublime to the ridiculous but I was feeling really miserable the other day. The news was overwhelming. The um, and it was cold and it was raining and you know we've we've got a lot of ups and downs at the moment. And I thought, what are my tiny stands that I make against <laughs> feeling miserable? And I'll tell you two of them. They're so stupid. And one of them, which is a a. a it, it becomes to me a luxury every time, mm. right? It's having bubbles in the bath. Now, right. I, I mean, I'm not talking about going to an expensive spa. I'm not even talking about expensive bubbles. But there's something expensive about... Expensive bubbles. I know, but I'm not. But I mean, there's something about getting into a hot bath that's got lots of bubbles yeah. that can make you feel yeah. okay for a little while. Right. So there's that yeah. one. And the other one is probably even sillier because I realise every time I make a coffee or a cup of tea mm. that I am hunting mm. for a, f a finer mug, yeah. right? We've got some thick, chunky ones that yeah. never break, ever. Yes, you are, and um, we've got some finer ones. And are, to me, yeah. if I drink my tea or my coffee out mm. of this mug that is kind of thinner, mm. I feel special as though I'm having a special drink. Yeah. If I have it out of the chunky mug, mm. it 
I just sound so silly. I'll tell you what, should we meet tomorrow to discuss this a little more? <laughs> well, I think, I think these things are important. That, no, I have not. I'm, I'm making a stand <laughs> against feeling dreary. Right. And I think, I think that we can all do that. I mean, the news is pretty relentless at the moment. I mean, mm. there's such so much bad news. And, 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 and people are beginning to feel cold physically. And Hold on a minute. Are you, you haven't given me a chance to talk about the things I like. Oh, come on, You're then. You're rambling on about mugs endlessly. <laughs> come uh, on, uh, then. Actually, uh, I can't think of many, although there are a lot, but they, they've just gone out of my head. There are one or two things. One, one is there is a period between um, the end of the evening mm -hmm. and going to sleep, um, which I enjoy. It, it has its own peace, in a way. Mm -hmm. Um I don't even quite know what the, the quality of that is. So but what is the sequence? It's just well, nothing unusual or, or, or not ordinary. I mean, it, it, it could be anything. It's just the knowledge that that, that time is away from the rest of the world. Yeah. It's just you and I uh, yeah. together, and I, it's, a, it's a good time. But, uh, I, yeah. I, yes, I, I argue every time that you should not be doing the crossword because I think mm. it wakes your brain up. Um, you do it anyway. Um, you have a favourite book that you're usually reading, don't you? And yeah, yeah. again, it's just that sense of. Mm. Uh, I, I think one of the difficulties is going to be that people don't feel they can put on unnecessary lights in the house because sometimes those are the ones that that make you feel okay. Oh, now there's that. That is an interesting one because it that's a very difficult thing for me because as a child. There was only one light bulb in our house, believe it or not. I know. And that light bulb was moved from room to room it in order to... It can't always been like that. But it, it must be... It's how I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was so little money around that yeah. you... To, to go and buy a new light bulb would, would not take precedence over some mm. very much more ordinary things. Mm. But, and I like having lights on. I, I like know. having a light on. I know. Uh, but we have we have got to be a bit I more know. A bit more careful. It's tough too. this at the moment, isn't it? Because yeah. I mean, it's all very well us talking about when we were children and we all had dressing gowns and slippers and I was thinking the other day how when I was a little girl I had something called a liberty bodice and I looked it up because I thought it can't have been called that, but it was. It was a sort of fleecy vest thing mm. that kept you from getting a chill. And it was a lot to do with that. And I know I've heard one or two politicians say, Well, we grew up, we didn't have central heating. No, you didn't but the trouble yeah. is you also did have a live fire probably yeah. and a bit of coal and and most people don't have the options to mm. create that sort of little world in the middle of a bigger world because yeah. it's not that world anymore they haven't learned how to make soup a lot of people or it's, it's very hard at the moment I think I think two two things have happened to people during this is it three years since COVID started, two and a half years. Mm. One is um, the, the uh, knowledge of death as a fact, the awareness of death, uh -huh. has slapped people in the face in a way that normally you can protect yourself against, mm. not all the time. Mm. Uh, there is that, and mm. <clears throat> because of that and linked to it, um, there is such a godless narrative in the world now we all know that at the end, you know, we've all got a queue of worries, most people, sorry, most people. You you go to bed saying, you lie there and you think, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that and that's a problem and I've got to get around to that. And you think, if only I could just get rid of this queue of things, uh, everything would be okay. And then you come to the back of the queue and you remember that it will end one day. And there is no narrative for that. Mm. Um, if you don't have a... A belief or a faith mm. and I'm not talking about implanting or, or, or just afflicting people with a faith with all its rules I'm talking about actually having a belief that there is a warm possibility that things can not end but mm. continue in a way that is mm. really really mm. fantastic mm. I haven't been there so I don't know about that for sure remember we were taught listening to uh, David Watson to some of the talks that he did towards the end of his life and he said about death being what did he say like the elderly doorman 
who opens the door right, and yeah. lets you yeah, in, yeah. which is a lovely way of putting it, but I'm not sure it's the way most people necessarily, including myself, think about it all mm. the time. You know, it's and those all those things become kind of more uh, become darker as yeah. as the winter becomes darker. Um, but I keep thinking of that little group in Hungary not mm. giving up and not giving in. Mm. They're not giving in to the narrative of their country. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't have necessarily said it was a godless narrative, but it's a, it's quite an oppressive narrative. And they're not yeah. giving in. Yeah. They're continuing to shine away. And every stand that's made against injustice and against poverty and against abuse mm. isn't giving in. It's small gestures. Yeah. I feel very proud of all the people that I'm seeing making these stands yeah, so at the moment. I, so do I. I also remember David Watson, those who don't know, who was a, a well-known preacher and writer in the 60s. He, he had cancer at the time, and in fact he died of it in the end. And one of the questions we asked him was, if you could only preach one more sermon you know you've done it for years oh he wrote he traveled and, the world um, didn't people he? have listened to you and respected you but you here we are here you are you're standing up in front of a load of people and you're told you've just got half a minute oh, yeah to tell them the most important thing in the world and you thought only for a few seconds and you said well to be honest i know exactly what i would tell them everything else i've ever said is a very small little importance he would say i would say god loves you that's what i would say mm. and and he said i've now i'm now i'm not look, looking forward to dying he said but i've moved from wanting to stay but being willing to go to being, being willing to stay, to stay but yeah. being prepared to go yeah. and the the profundity of his faith and belief in that was yeah. quite remarkable and yeah. and my great hope and prayer is that we in the certainly in the church christian church mm. find ways of talking about this that don't sound ridiculous mm. Mm. And, and that we can mm. find ways of inviting people mm. to have a look at what we're talking yeah. about yeah. and see for themselves what yeah. they think it might be those few words adrian we're talking about small things he would say in his moment or two I would tell people God loves them. Mm -hmm. So that's a very small number of words. Yeah, a small number a of words. Huge statement. Huge message. Yeah. We'd yeah, love anyway. to hear any little things that help you to get through dreariness, but also times when you've tuned in to somebody making a stand against something. Yeah. Listening to sounding the shadows, that must be incredible <laughs> help. And too. on that note, we'll say <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs>